And the strong people of God said, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We know that you have brought us to this level. And we know that you are going to be a blessing to us. And you are going to give yourself more and more to us. Lord, we pray, make your people stronger in Jesus' name. Once again, we come to your word. Enlighten us. Give us more of this bread of life. And we pray, Lord, our lives will be the better for eating your service in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to chapters 13 and 14. As we look at these two chapters together, we're looking at the saints' commitment to essential kingdom righteousness. The saints' commitment to essential kingdom righteousness. In chapter 14, the Lord is reminding us that he has brought us into the kingdom. We're looking at chapter 14 of Romans, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I will remind you that although we have the King Christ on the inside, we live in the kingdom of God, we also live in an earthly kingdom. We are also here in each country, in each community, under the government, a truce, a community, or a country. And we ought to be citizens, loyal ones, righteous ones, holy ones of both kingdoms. The kingdom here, earthly kingdom, and the kingdom there, heavenly kingdom. That's why, talking about the true Christian, converted by Christ, consecrated to Christ, and conform to Christ unreservedly, were referred to as saints. We're looking at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 27. In Romans chapter 8, verse 27, and if, and if that such as the hearts knoweth what's the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Chapter 12, verse 13. In chapter 12, verse 13, it says, Distributing to the necessity of saints. Chapter 15, verse 25. But now, I go on to Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Verse 26. For it has pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Verse 31. That I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service, which I have for Jerusalem, may be accepted of the saints. Chapter 16. Reading from verse 2, that she receive her in the Lord as becometh saints. Chapter 16, verse 15. Salute Philologos and Julia, Nereus, and his sister Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. 
As we go through the epistle to the Romans, you'll see that Christians are referred to as saints, and Christians should live the life of saints, whether we are in the church or we're living in a community, whether we're in the home or we're living in the office or we're in the office, whether we're in the market or we're just in uh, the society, we live as saints. And that then brings us to a responsibility here while we walk in the office, while we live in the community, and also while we relate with the children of God and also respond to the Lord. We're dividing the message, the saints' commitment to essential kingdom righteousness to three parts. Number one, the consideration of the expected responsibilities of Christian citizens. The consideration of the ex expected responsibilities of Christian citizens. Number two, the characteristics of essential righteousness. The characteristics of essential righteousness in conscientious communities. Conscientious communities. Number three. The commitment to edifying relationships in compassionate congregations. The commitment to edifying relationships in compassionate congregations. Number one. The consideration of our expected responsibilities as Christian citizens. We're looking at chapter 13, from verse 1. We're reading to verse 7. Let every soul, let everyone, let every Christian, let every citizen be subject unto higher powers, powers in higher authority, higher authority. For there is no power but of God, and the powers that be are the age of God. He's saying, there's no authority but of God. There's no government but of God. And the government that be, and the authorities that be, are the age of God. But you, whosoever therefore Resisted the power. Whosoever therefore resisted the authority, whosoever therefore resisted the government, resisted the ordinance of God, the institution of God, the appointment of God. And they that resist in rebellion, they that resist in disobedience, they that resist in disloyalty shall receive to themselves damnation, condemnation, punishment, wrath of God. For the rulers, whether they are called kings or presidents, for the rulers, whether they are called governors or counselors, for the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. And thou, thou then, will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good. Do that which is right. Do that which is your responsibility. And thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. For thou, for if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute trust upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, submissive, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake, for because for this cause, pay taxes also, tributes also, 
But they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear, respect, for whom fear is due, and honor to whom honor is due. We're considering our responsibilities, expected responsibilities as Christian citizens. Already the passage is very clear. Although we are Christians, we are children of God, we live in a community and country under a government, and we have responsibility in that government, to that government. Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, that is, to the principles in authority who have power to rule, to obey magistrates, and to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man. If you connect those two verses together, principalities, powers, magistrates, it says to speak evil of no man. It's talking about those in authority in particular. Speak evil of no man, of none in authority, in the government, or government agencies. To be no brothers, and but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. We shouldn't act as if we're above the law. We should be law abiding. And then in First Peter chapter two, First Peter chapter two, verse thirteen, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Submit yourselves in our local government, in our states, in our provinces, in our country, anywhere we live. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme. In our case, we use the word president. The president as supreme. Unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers. We're not looking at them in person. We're looking at their position where God has placed them. And therefore, we render them the honor, the fear, the loyalty, the obedience, and we do our responsibilities. And it says, for the praise of them, they do well. That's why they are restored. It tells us in verse 15, for so is the will of God that was well doing. Ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. We're coming to Daniel chapter 32. Daniel, sorry, chapter 4. Think about that. Daniel chapter 4, verse 32. In verse 32, And they shall drive thee. Yes, Daniel the prophet, talking to the emperor, the king, Nebuchadnezzar. And it shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee eat grass as oxen, and seven times seasons shall pass over thee. Listen to this until thou know what we ought to know, until thou know what we ought to understand, until thou know what we need to discern. Until thou know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, underline this in your Bible, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And giveth it to whomsoever 
he will, whoever is there. As the leader, as the king, as the emperor, as the president of your country, of our country, that God give, gave the give kingdom and the government to whomsoever he will. That's why when you talk, you don't talk in a negative way, disparaging way, or disrespectful way to the about the leaders, political leaders in our country. Whatever they're doing and whoever they are, whatever side they belong to, whatever party they're leaning through, it tells us what their responsibilities are. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 25, reading from verse 1. If there be a controversy between men, and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them. There should be orderliness in the nation and in every community. And there are judges to judge when things go wrong. Then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. That's why those leaders are there. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23. And we're reading from verse 4. Acts 23, verse 4. And they that stood by said, Revilest thou, God's high priest? Something had happened here. And Paul the Apostle was treated unjustly. And then he spoke against the man that had commanded him to be smitten. And then somebody challenged Paul the Apostle. They that stood by, they were surprised. You're a Christian. You're an Apostle. And you revile God's high priest? Look at Paul. He didn't say, what do you mean? He's a political leader. He's a religious leader. I'm an Apostle. I have revelations that he doesn't have. No. And Paul said, then said Paul, I knew not, I was not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Paul the apostle knew. And what he taught, he also practiced. A Paul the apostle was a journalist. He was not right as a Christian. As an apostle, he will not write the way many journalists write about the leadership in the country. A Paul, the apostle, was a kind of a freelance writer. Paul, the apostle, will not write the way many freelance writers, the way they write. Because he said, I didn't know that. But now that I know, I shouldn't have said that. Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. We're looking at chapter 24. Acts chapter 24, verse 16. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, reading from verse 17. Matthew 22, verse 17. The Lord Jesus Christ shows us what our attitude ought to be to the leaders in any community, any local government, any stage, and the leaders in the country. What well, reading from Matthew 22, verse 17. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to pay tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And he brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? 
And he said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he to them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, the honor which belongs to Caesar as emperor, the respect which belongs to Caesar as king, the fear which belongs to Caesar as the leader of the empire, but and unto God the things that are God's. The word of God has taught us very clearly and we shouldn't allow what people post on the internet, what people write in the media, and what people uh, may try to put on Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever. We should remember we're Christians. And as Christians, we should not follow after those uh, people. And we shouldn't put anything in the papers in an anonymous way or put anything on the electronic system in an anonymous way. Let us show that conscientiously we believe the word of God and we're not saying anything, we're not writing anything, we're not posting anything on any site against the government of our country and against the leaders in our community against our leaders too in the house of God. We come to point number two. The characteristics of essential righteousness in conscientious communities. We're looking at Romans chapter 13 and we're reading from verse 8. Romans chapter 13, reading here from verse 8. Oh no man anything but to love one another for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. It says as we look at our neighbors, we look at our people in the office, in the market, in the neighborhood, in the, whole, in the house where we're living as co-tenants, and in the church, as we look at believers, it says, this is the debt we owe everyone. Love one another for this. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It tells us that the bottom line, the conclusion, the foundation of all the commandments of God is this. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Love walketh no ill to his neighbor. If I do this, that will hurt him. I can't do it. If I do this, that might destroy him. I won't do it. If I do this, that will make him sorrowful. I'll not do it. If I do this, that will make him less effective. I'll not do it. If I do this, that will destroy his personality. I won't do it. If I put this on the net, on the internet, that will destroy his personality. I will not do it. If I do this, it will not be right. I will not do it. He says, love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And that knowing. The time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation, final salvation, full salvation, eternal salvation, eternal rest, eternal redemption, and final going away from here unto glory. Now is that nearer than when we believed. The night is past spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us, let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put ye on. Let what we see of your character, 
of your conduct, of your appearance, of your interaction, of your behavior, of your response, of your reaction, of your lifestyle. Let what we see be what we put on. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Make no provision for anger. Make no provision for provocation. Make no provision for imperfection. Make no provision for human frailty in your life. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. He wants us to live with this golden rule. He wants us to live with this precept that we love one another. You do unto others as we expect them to do unto you. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 12. Therefore, all things, all things, whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. It says, uh, before you do something, how would I want him to do this to me if I were in this position? Before you say something, well, somebody has done something wrong. He shouldn't have done that. And then I turned the table. What if that accident, accidental behavior had happened to me? I feel the shame. I feel the sorrow. Would I want him to be talking about it? No then I shouldn't talk about it. And don't reveal any secret of anyone. If that were to be you, how would you want them to reveal that this secret and then everybody is looking down on you? No, you wouldn't want that. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them. It says, this is the law and the prophets. Telling us in Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Here we're reading from verse 37. Matthew chapter 22. From verse 37. It tells us, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, whatever you are doing, doing it in the name of the Lord. Doing it in the service of the Lord. You say, this is my chance to show my love. This is my chance to reveal the depth of my love. Loving God with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. And so I'm going to do this giving every sin of God. That's the law. And that is the fulfillment of the first commandment and the great commandment of the Lord. Look at verse 38. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And there are people that will say, Who is my neighbor? Members of the same church, of course, yes. Goes beyond that, though. Members of the same denomination, yes. Goes beyond that, though. Members of the church worldwide, yes. Anybody you interact with, goes beyond that, too. And workers in the same office, tenants in the same house, Sojourners in the same village, pilgrims on the same road, anyone that comes across to you and you interact together, that's your neighbor. And it says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Your thoughts toward them, your actions towards them, your behavior towards them. Christ lives within and establishes this law. This principle of love, loving your neighbor as yourself, on these two commandments hang all the law and 
the prophets. First Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 1. Do I speak of the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, charity, and become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal? And do I bestow and do I have the gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge? And do I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, have not love, have nothing? And do I bestow all my goods to feed the poor? And do I have, I give my body to be burnt? And I'm not charity. It profited me nothing. It's telling us that love, charity, must be the foundation of everything we do. Must be the goal of every action from us. Must be the reason of anything we say. Love to God. Love to our neighbors. And he says, whatever our gifts are, whatever our talents are, whatever our position may be, whatever the productivity of our ministry may look like, he says, without love, we're nothing. Without love, we profit nothing. And without love, we'll achieve nothing. What kind of love? How does that love manifest itself? Verse 4. Charity suffers long and is kind. You know what that means? Charity may suffer. Love may suffer very long. It remains kind. Charity envies not. It's not all the time comparing what I have, what she has. What I have, what he possesses. Who I am, what he is. No comparison. It says, charity is not jealous. Charity envies not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Charity does not exalt itself above others. Looking down on others. And it tells us in verse 5, does not behave itself unseemly, uncomely. It does not behave itself irresponsibly. Seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. You hear that somebody has taken a false step, a wrong step. Somebody is backsliding. Somebody has done, has committed a crime, and now is in trouble. Charity does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. And I pray that this love of God will not fail in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in Jesus' name. We're looking at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 6, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith that walketh by love. The faith that saves us, the faith responds to things around us in love. The faith that brings conversion, the faith that saves the faith that sanctifies. The faith that brings us 
into the position where we are. That same faith works by love. And then we are able to demonstrate, manifest love all around us. Verse 13. For brethren, you have been called to liberty, freedom. Only use not your liberty, your freedom, to an equation to the flesh. But by love serve one another. That's what we owe. And that is what he expects us to do in the lives of other people. Verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 10. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. And I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. After the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor barbarian nor Jew, circumcision, nor circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free. But Christ is all and in all. But on therefore. See what he's saying? Whether Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, high or low, barbarian or Scythian, illiterate or literate, bond or free. There's one thing that characterizes every child of God. And this is it in verse 12. Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy, and beloved, powers of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, even if any man, if, if any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave us, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bunch of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Then he tells us in verse 16 that the word of Christ Dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in the home, whatsoever ye do in the church, whatsoever ye do, in the marketplace, whatsoever ye do in the office, whatsoever ye do in your community, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8. But let us who of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope 
of salvation. Look at verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Here's a duty. Here's a responsibility to everyone around us, everyone we touch, everyone connected with us one way or the other. It says, wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Edify one another, even as also ye do. We beseech you, brethren, know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, want them that are really comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. And then in verse 16, rejoice evermore. 17, pray without ceasing. 18, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 19, quench not the spirit. 20, despise not prophesying. 21, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. He'll do it in your life. Already it's not much in your life. You're higher today than you were yesterday. You will not come low anymore in Jesus' name. We're looking at point number three now. Our commitment to edifying relationships in compassionate congregations. Christians one to another. Believers one to the other. As we are in the congregation of the children of God, anytime congregation among leaders, congregations among workers, congregations normal in the church service, congregations of the children of God, we must always have this in mind, compassionate Christians, compassionate believers interacting together. And our relationships must be edifying. Our commitment must be to that. Our commitment to edifying relationships in compassionate congregations. Romans chapter 14. Reading from verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith Receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that, that he may eat all herbs. Another who is weak eateth herbs. What the Lord is saying here now is that our knowledge of what we believe to be edible, to be eating. And all that varies from one person to the other. And there are people that are honestly meticulous. From the knowledge they believe they have, they believe that this is not good for them. But then they may go further. And say, this is not good for everyone. 
And if they see another believer, each in that, we're not talking of taking alcohol. We're not talking of smoking. We're talking about some normal, normal, normal things. What everybody considers as normal. But there are people that have the knowledge that this will hurt them. For example, there are people that don't eat meat. Not because of Easter time or no Easter time with a religious connotation. They believe that eating meat will hurt them. But now they may pass that on to everybody else. Eating meat will hurt everybody. And so they look at, they gauge your Christianity as to whether you are eating meat or you are not eating meat. Other people, they believe that taking milk, dairy milk, will hurt them one way or the other. And because of that, they don't take that milk. They have a substitute. For them, no problem. But the problem comes when we begin to judge each other on these things that may be all right for you, but not all right for other people. Other people, they know they have the tendency of reacting to sugar, cane sugar, sugar cane. And if they take it, they know what the consequence will be. And as a result of the consequences in their lives, they're also going to study and to read. And people like them that believe the same thing, they're written copiously on sugar and honey. And so, they don't take sugar or honey. That's all right. That's all right. That's a personal choice. When we pass that on to all the people and we're no more judging on the basis of the scriptures that says we live holy lives, righteous lives, and we now interpret the holiness and the righteousness to eating this and not eating that. That's what Paul the Apostle is saying here. And he's saying, let our congregations be compassionate. And then we don't come to the Congress and uh, we are now the apostles of dieting. And everybody will see during the break, we call him. I just want to, you know, discuss uh, this important issue with you. How old are you now? Well, you know, we're Christians together. I'm about 40 now. Ah, you know, the moment you get, you cross that line and you go beyond 40. What's your eating habit now? Tell me. When you wake up in the morning, what do you do first? Do you take two glasses of water first or do you just, you know, go ahead and take, a, you know, breakfast? And then the fellow tells you, an apostle of dieting now begins, you know, when you wake up, all that you are hearing here, put that aside now. Let me teach you something important and essential. Uh, uh, that's what the apostle is saying here. Let's leave all these uh, non-essentials alone. It says, for one believes that he, he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs, vegetables only. Let not him that eateth despise him. Look down him that eateth not. And let not him that eateth not judge him that eateth. For God has received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master, he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up. For God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. As we discuss together, did you have watch night service the last day of the year? Yes, we did. How about you? 
Yes, I did. You know what? Pastor so and so, would you believe this? In their church, in their denomination, they didn't have watch night service. How can they get to heaven? Watch night service. One year is sending, the other year is coming, and that man, he calls himself pastor, and didn't have watch night service. One man esteemeth all days alike. First of January, 31st of December, this other day, or that other day. It says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Let there be compassion and don't judge each other on minor, minor, inconsequential things. He that regardeth the day, regardeth he to the Lord. He that regarded it not the day to the Lord, he does not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth thanks. For none of us liveth unto himself. No man dieth unto himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. You are living for the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. When you come to die, if the rapture does not take place now, you will be with the Lord in Jesus' name. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? You know, some of you, with this knowledge we have, you go around, and sometimes you, you may be you, they're serving food at you know, the Congress here, and you, haven't, you happen to have read all these uh, things on the internet. And you read about dieting more than you read the Bible. You read about what to eat, what not to eat more than you read. The things that will take us to heaven. And while we're serving food, you're looking at the people serving, you're pitching them. You're looking at the people that are receiving the food, you're pitching them. And then you call one of those people serving, if they serve tea, you call them aside. How much tea is in that, uh, how much sugar is in that cup of tea? And the fellow says, I don't know. You don't know, and you're passing it on. Do you know you can be poisoning somebody? Do you know that that cup of tea with this level of sugar, you say, I don't know, I don't know. Before you serve anything, you should know. We are blessed that food. The Lord has sanctified that food. And long life will be given unto you in Jesus' name. With long life will I satisfy him. And I will show him my salvation. You know other people, you'll be surprised. The level some people go. In the age that you were talking about. They see you taking uh, water. You see, that water. Is that bottled water or spring water? Can I tell you something? Once that water stays in the bottle for days length of time, plastic bottle, don't drink it. Make that a law for yourself. Because me now, I make a law. I didn't get that law yet. There's a bottle of water here. And we're drinking. And the more we drink, the stronger we get. You're strong. I am strong. When you become a Christian, it is not every fad of the day, every fad of the hour, Everything that everybody is going around perpetrating that you carry. You understand. You make your life a balanced Christian life. And you will not be judging other people about this, about that. Let's go on. 
in verse 11, chapter 14. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not, therefore, judge one another anymore. But judge this rather, that no man put his stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know, and I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. He's talking of innocent things, vegetable, fruit, carbohydrates, and all the other things. Nothing unclean by itself. But to him that esteemeth anything unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, thou walkest not charitably. If your brother says, no, I don't want to take that, and you force him, say, what's wrong in it? Why don't you take it? It doesn't align with my system. It doesn't go well with me. I've discovered if I take this, if I take that, it has this tendency of bringing up this kind of effect, reaction in my body. Say, no, aren't you a Christian? Don't force anybody. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then thy good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is not dieting. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Look at your brother. Look at his spiritual need. Look at your sister. Look at her spiritual need. And gauge first. This will edify my brother. This will contribute to the life, spiritual life of my sister. And that thing, only that thing, that will edify. That's what you talk about. That's what you share. That's what you discuss because your mind, your heart, your purpose, your desire is to be a prophet spiritually unto your brother, unto your sister. That's why it says, let us therefore, because of all this that we're here, let us therefore, because of the compassion we ought to have, let us therefore, because we're interested in the upliftment of our brother and our sister. Let us therefore, because of the centrality of this life of righteousness and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, first things first, important things to be put in the front burner. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat, eat, don't eat, don't eat, eat. For meat, destroy not the work of God. All things indeed appear, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended. Or it's made weak. Not talking about food only now. Anything we do that will weaken the conviction of our brother. That will weaken and slow down the pace of his wanting to get to heaven. Anything we do that will weaken the mind, the heart, the conviction of a fellow brother, of a fellow sister. He said, that is wrong. As our faith, verse 22. Have each of thyself before God. 
Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that sin which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. Look at this. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. I pray the Lord will help us that will die to sell, be alive unto God, and be interested, mightily interested in the things that will edify the brethren. We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of God constraineth us. Anything we do, anything we say, in our interaction with the brethren, in our response to the brethren, in the way we comport ourselves, in the way we carry out our conviction, it says in verse 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we just judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not live henceforth unto themselves, but unto them that died for them and rose again. We're living for the glory of God. You will live for the glory of God. I said you will live for the glory of God. Galatians chapter 6. In Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 2. Bear ye one another's bodies, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own body. We're looking at... First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Reading from verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, verse 9. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace shall be with you. Peace in your soul. Peace in your heart. Peace in your life. Please, peace in your journey. Peace in your family. And progress in your ministerial work. The Lord confirm his blessing upon you as we obey these words in Jesus' name. Rise up and tell the Lord. He wants to bless you more. So you can be more blessing to the people of God. Right, so tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your peace abiding upon my life.